Hi, my name's Jack and welcome to Kit Guru. In today's video, I'm taking a look at NZXT's latest product aimed at streamers, the Signal HD60. This tiny, sleek looking capture card can record 1080p at 60fps and pass through a signal up to 4K at 60fps, and this, along with the Signal 4K30, are NZXT's first capture cards. Now, although I don't have the 4K30 to test, I do recommend checking that out if you're interested in 4K30 recordings, although for streaming online, most content in HD60 is fine. Costing just £129.99, this comes in at a great price point and is cheaper than both of Elgato's capture cards, but can you rely on this for your streams? Let's check it out. Starting off with the unboxing, the Signal HD60 comes in a fairly small box that follows NZXT's brand colours of purple and white. There's some spot gloss which is nice, and turning the box over you get some spec info. Opening up the box, you'll be presented with the capture card and I'll put this aside for now. Then you have a USB-A to Type-C cable, and a HDMI 2.0 cable. Looking at the design of the HD60, it's so small, and in all honesty I much prefer this to the Elgato HD60X that I reviewed back in April. NZXT's capture card just looks so much sleeker, and this will be guaranteed to fit in with any streamlined setup. On the top, there's a very subtle NZXT logo, and that's pretty much it in terms of branding. On the left and right side, you have a number of perforated holes, which help to expel heat. At the back, you have the USB Type-C connection, and HDMI in and out ports. Now, as I mentioned, you get a HDMI 2 cable in the box, and the HDMI ports on this capture card are 2.0, so this won't support variable refresh rate. If you want or need VRR support, say you have a PlayStation 5 for example, then you need to look at a different capture card option. Turning the HD60 over, there are four rubber feet and this helps to keep the capture card planted on your desk, and I love the fact that NZXT made these purple rather than just black, that's a nice design choice. Finally, there is a little white LED at the front, this flashes if your console is turned off and stays solid white when your console is on. Now although this indicator is handy to know when your console is on, although you probably would know that anyway, the blinking LED can be a bit annoying when your console is in standby mode. When it comes to the build quality, I mean, it's just plastic, it doesn't feel that premium like some other capture cards that you can get, and I definitely wouldn't say that it's robust, especially as you can literally hear a loud pop when you squeeze the casing. If you are a console streamer and you're looking to use your headset microphone in your streams, that's where NZXT's chat cable splitter comes in. This splitter cable costs just $7.49 and is an essential item if you plan to use your gaming headset as a microphone. Just plug the headset into the splitter, which then connects to both the PC line-in port and your controller mic jack, and then you're good to go. So who is going to be using this Signal HD60 and why get this over alternatives? Well, this capture card is for people who stream their consoles or have a dual PC setup. If you just plan to stream from one PC, you really don't need to get a capture card. To put it simply, when you record in a program like OBS, OBS is then encoding that footage and saving it to your computer. Whereas if you use a capture card, all you're doing is outputting a signal from your graphics card into a capture device, back into your computer, and still encoding it with OBS. So it is essentially the same thing. And you're unlikely to see any performance increase using a capture card versus just using OBS. The Signal HD60 allows you to record 1080p at 60fps, and this will work with all streaming platforms. It also supports 8-bit 422 YUY2 color space, which offers great color and will be more than enough for streaming. The really nice thing about the Signal HD60 is that it is plug and play. You don't need NZXT software at all to get this to work. You can just plug it straight into your computer and OBS will pick it up as an input device and you can start recording. So to set this up, all you really need to do is plug the HDMI cable from your console into the HDMI in port in the back of the capture card, then use the HDMI cable provided, plug one end into the HDMI out port, and then plug the other end into your monitor. Lastly, you need to use the USB-C cable, plug that into the back of the capture card, and then plug the other end into your computer, and you're pretty much good to go. And then to get this working with OBS, this is all you need to do. Simply click on Add New Video Capture Device, select the NZXT Signal HD60, and you're done. Footage from this capture card looks fantastic. It's smooth and the colors are vivid. Sure, it doesn't offer all the features that you can get on more expensive cards, but for most streamers, this will be enough. If I waited any longer for my husband to put food on the table, I'd have died of starvation. I'll be moving on soon, though. Emerald Ranch, well, 
It's a strange place. How so? The owner's a mean bastard. Strange, too. Delights in bullying folk. There's a daughter, but she never leaves the house. You can see her in the window sometimes. And here's a quick comparison between NZXT's Signal HD60 and Elgato's HD60X. Father? What? Did something change? The forest feels different now. Everything is different, boy. Try not to dwell on it. Yes, sir. So looking at both of these capture cards side by side, I would say that the NZXT actually looks a little bit more vibrant than the Elgato. Both of these had the exact same settings in OBS, nothing was changed. And it is worth mentioning that the Elgato HD60X can support HDR pass-through and higher refresh rate pass-through, so it will be a better product for you if you need those. However, after looking at this test footage, I would probably recommend taking a look at NZXT's 4K30 because that can also pass through 4K 60fps HDR and higher refresh rates as well. And that's priced at $169.99, whereas the Elgato HD60X is priced at $189.99. So you will save £20 more with NZXT's 4K 30 offering. Another way to use the Signal HD60 is to capture your mirrorless camera or DSLR. So what you're seeing right now is footage fed from my Sony a7 III directly to the NZXT Signal HD60. This is, of course, 1080p 60fps, and as you can see, the footage looks brilliant. Besides streaming on Twitch, you could use this for Zoom meetings or Discord. So there's plenty of ways you can use your camera with the NZXT Signal HD60. There's only really a few downsides to the HD60 that I can think of so far. Firstly, no HDR support. Most consoles in 2022 and most content in general has HDR support, so it would have been nice to at least have had HDR pass-through. But if you do need that, you can take a look at the 4K30. There's also no support for higher refresh rates, so no 1080p at 1440fps for example. If you want that, you will need the 4K30 as well. 
The last thing is no VRR support. Now this isn't supported on the Signal HD 60 or the 4K 30. So if you need that, you will need to look at a completely different brand for your capture card. That being said, I don't know if VRR support is really that necessary. I think most people will be able to stream without any issues. And out of all of those things, the biggest deal breaker for me is the fact that there's no high refresh rate support. So I have a 4K 144Hz screen. It would be nice to at least put through, you know, 4K, 120 FPS, but I'm limited at 4K 60 FPS. Now, usually when I get to this point in the video, I start talking about the software that you can use with the product, but NZXT's cam software doesn't really give you any features. Instead, it just gives you a sort of settings list so you can see what signal you're sending to your computer. And that's pretty much it. So for me, this capture card does exactly what it promises and it does it well. If you do need those extra features like higher refresh rate pass-throughs and HDR pass-through, then take a look at the 4K 30. And that brings me to the end of my review. If you've enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like. It really helps out the Kit Guru channel. If you want to see more from us, be sure to subscribe. Hit that bell icon as well, and you'll be notified when we upload another video. If you want to pick up some cool merch, like the t-shirt I've been wearing throughout this video, the links are in the description. You can also support us on Patreon to unlock some exclusive content, and be sure to follow us on social media for the latest updates. My name's Jack, you've been watching Kit Guru, and I'll see you in the next one.